Okay, in this video I want to talk about average rate of change and velocity. And uh, actually very often I'll just abbreviate average rate of change as a rock. All right, um, just because otherwise it's kind of cumbersome to keep saying that over and over again. So what do we mean by average rate of change? So we have a function here, I could call it f, and we can see if we call this axis um, x and this y, that as x changes, y changes. So there's a rate of change um, indicated by the change in as x changes, y changes in this manner. And I'll, we'll look at a specific function in a moment, but just to kind of give you an overview of the idea, I've just drawn, drawn this curve here that I'm going to call f. Um, what I mean by average rate of change, though, is if we, if we kind of assume that the rate of change is constant between two points. So, for example, we can let this be point A. So right here on the curve, this would be f of A. All right, this is the function value associated with A. And say, come over here, call this point B. These are x values, right? So we can come up here. That point on the curve, we'll call that f of b. So it's the function value associated with that x value. Now we could draw in a secant line. The secant line would go through the two points. All right. So what I, we mean by average rate of change is basically the rate of change along the line here because a line, we know a line has a constant rate of change. All right. So between any two points, it'll always be the same rate of change, which is the slope of the line. So let's see where that comes from. So one way to think about this is I can draw in a little triangle here along the line, all right? And notice that this vertical distance is just f of b minus f of a. It's the change in y, right? So f of b minus f of a, where the, on the, on the uh, horizontal axis, this change is just b minus a, all right? So the average rate of change is defined to be the change in y over the change in x. That little triangle just, it's also referred to as a delta, and it just means the change in y over the change in x. So we look, this actually tells us how y changes, right? We start at f of a, as we move across, we go up to f of b. So that's going to be f of b minus f of a, and then the change in x, we start at a, we go to b, so the change is b minus a, all right? Now, if we see these, each is this point is a, f of a, that's a point on the curve, and is th this point is b, f of b, then hopefully you recognize this formula as just the slope of the line between these two points, and that's our average rate of change. All right, so although the rate of change is not constant, this is curved, right? It seems to be changing more, it's, it's steeper up here, right? So it seems to be changing more quickly and less quickly down here. Over a given interval, we can figure out what the average rate of change is just using the line connecting those two points. So to, to give a specific example, let's let f, um, we'll call it f of t, let that be t squared, all right? And suppose we wanted to, um, we could let a equal 1 and b equal 2. So, in other words, we can find an actual number here, right? If we, if we let f equal t squared, so this is actually now the t-axis instead of the x-axis, but either way, it's the independent variable. And if we're going to let a equal 1 and then b equal 2, what is this average rate of change along this interval? So let's see how we would do that. Well, if a is 1, then f of a is f of 1, which is 1 squared, which is 1. So that gives me the point 1, 1. And then f of b equals f of 2, which is 2 squared, and that's 4, so that gives me the point 2, 4. All right. Now to find the average rate of change, 
I'm going to just use the slope formula here. So 4 minus 1, it goes from 1 to 4, so the change is 4 minus 1, and then the change in x is 2 minus 1, right? We started at 1, we went to 2, so the difference is 2 minus 1, and that leaves me with 3 over 1, which is 3. All right, so this would be the average rate of change along this interval, or the slope of the secant line. So that's that's an important thing to note, that the average rate of change over an interval is equal to the slope of the secant line connecting those two points. Okay, so that's average rate of change. What about velocity? So that's another part of what we want to discuss here. So let's take a look at another example. Um, this formula here gives us the height of a falling object, all right, and it gives it to us a formula for it. Negative 16 t squared plus 180. So one way to think about this is that the falling object started at 180. We'll call it, um, we'll let uh, time be measured in seconds and the height, we'll measure that in feet, okay? So this tells me what my height is after t seconds. So you might start off at 180 feet, and every second this is decreasing, the height is decreasing by negative 16 times however long it's been following, falling. So notice that this is going to fall faster and faster as time increases because you have this t squared factor, right? So that's consistent with what we know about falling objects, that there's a certain acceleration due to gravity. So if an object will fall faster the longer it's been falling. Okay, So we want to use this formula to find the average velocity over the following time intervals. So what we have to remember is that velocity is just the change in distance over the change in time. So very similar to what we had here with the change in y over change in x. This is just when we're using kind of a generic x and y in kind of a mathematical context. But for velocity, it's there's a specific distance is our dependent variable and time is our independent variable. So again, think about if you're driving and you cover 180 miles in three hours. Well, you know then that your average velocity is 180 divided by 3 or 60 miles an hour. So it's, a, it's kind of an intuitive, um, you know, if you've done any traveling, you know it's, it's kind of an intuitive um, idea as far as velocity. So how do we apply that to this particular um, function? So we want to find the average velocity over 0, 1, all right? Um, so very similar to what we did before, we just need to find h of 0, all right? So if I put in 0 here for t, I'm just going to end up with 180. And then h of 1, I'm going to have negative 16 times 1 squared plus 180, or just 180 minus 16, and that's 164, right? So now we just need to, we can look at these as two points, right? So one point, when t equals 0, we know h of 0 is 180, and then when, h, when t equals 1, h of 1 is 164. So in this case, the change is going to be negative, right? Because it's going from 180 down to 164. So we would expect a negative rate of change here because my y value, or in this case distance, is decreasing. We have a falling object. So <clears throat> I'm going to take 164 minus 180 because this is my starting distance and that's my ending distance or height. And then this is after one second and that's at zero seconds. So we would end up with negative 16 over 1, or negative 16 feet per second. All right, so over that first um, second of falling, it's falling at an average of 16 feet per second. Now let's look at what happens for the, the, the next second, from 1 to 2. So we already know what h of 1 is, so I'm going to have, that's going to be 1.1, 1 .1 164. That's kind of the first, the, the left end of my interval. What about h of 2? All right, so I'm going to have negative 16 times 2 squared plus 180. That's negative 16 times 4 
plus 180. And that's going to be negative 64 plus 180. That's going to be 116. All right. So my second point, when t equals 2, I end up with 116. So again, average rate of change. I have my ending height minus my starting height over my ending time minus my starting time. All right, so that 116 minus 164, you can verify, that's going to be negative 48. And again, we expect this to be negative. Our, our object is falling. Its height is getting less each time over 1. So this is negative 48 feet per second. All right, so again, we see that as we expected, because of this t squared factor, we see that the average rate, um, maybe one way to think about it, just draw a quick um, sketch here. So this is going to look something like we're going to start off up here like at 180, and we're going to have something like this, right? So from 0 to 1, might you might have, let's use another color here, you might have a line that looks like that, whereas if you go from 1 to 2, you're going to have a line that looks like that. So clearly this has a, 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 a um, well, I could, one way to say it is this has a steeper slope than this. So we see this negative 48 would be the average rate of change along here, where the negative 16 would be the average rate of change along here. We have just a steeper slope because this thing is falling faster and faster. All right, I want you to try this last one on your own. So just pause the video here for a moment and see if you can find the average rate of change from 0 to 2. All right, go ahead and pause it. Okay, now I'm going to, hopefully you've had an opportunity to try this for yourself. Um, let's go ahead and see how we would do this. Well, we've already got, we've already got the points that we need, right? Here's my point for 0 and here's my point for 2. So I can now just plug into this, this same, basically, slope formula. Um, so uh, let's see. We've got my, my ending height is 116 minus my starting height, which is 180, over my ending time, which was 2, minus my starting time, which was 0. So this is going to give me negative 64 over 2, or negative 32 feet per second. So it turns out to be in between these two. And let's see how this might make sense graphically. If I were to just go from 0 to 2, my secant line would look like this. right? So notice this is going to have a slope that's greater than the slope from 0 to 1, but not as steep as the slope from 1 to 2. So that makes sense, this negative 32 between negative 16 and negative 48. So average velocity is really just an application of the idea of average rate of change applied to a specific context, in this case, it's distance.